In this video, I'm buying a built 24 valve Cummins four wheel drive for just $2,000. Just a quick little bit of context before we get into the video. Uh, I have a couple second gens, one with 141K and one that I had just gotten with 68,000 miles. Uh, so they're awesome little second gens, but I really wanted to do a budget uh, beater diesel build for all of you. Um, and what's better than a clapped out second gen with super sky high miles. So I was doing my nightly Facebook marketplace search uh, for marketing clients, for detailing clients, and uh, for projects, and I stumbled upon this. It was posted earlier that day, and the dude was asking three grand for this Cummins. Horrible marketing, and you could see like this thing is filthy. Absolutely atrocious, it had front end damage. Um, they hit something with the headlight, the front bumper, the grill, the front fender, like, this thing was messed up. There was a reason it was three grand and the headlights did not work, but I knew that the deal was gonna get bought up by somebody if I didn't go snag it up first. So I messaged the dude, I asked if the price was negotiable. He said yes, and off to the races we went. And I said, you know what, if I buy it, I buy it. If I don't, so be it. Uh, but at least we went and checked it out. So I ended up going, took it on a test drive. The front end, if you've ever been in a second gen, you know how loose the front end steering components usually are. Well, this truck was bad. It was like that magnified by a few. Like it was really, really, really horribly loose, dangerously loose, especially when you just get there as the sun is coming down, it's turning uh, into nighttime into dusk and you can't really see. This is a truck that you've never driven before. The steering wheel is going all over. And what's worse is the, uh, the front left brake caliper worked really well. I don't know about the front right, but anytime you hit the brakes, it would pull you left into oncoming traffic. So uh, it was a little bit of a death trap, but you know that's what I love and you know that's how I get it cheap. So I talked him down from 3K down to 2000 and I decided, you know what? I'm gonna try to take it home. I got tail lights that work. I got uh, the roof lights, um, the running lights up top, and the headlights don't work, but the person in front of me uh, does have working headlights, and if I can just follow their tail lights and stay close to them, I should be fine, right? So roll the clip into what had happened. We're driving her, big Cummins, home with no, uh, no headlights. Gotta love it. Can be. No problem to me. So we got it right here. We got Copilot with actual working headlights. They told me to move it down here uh, so that it wouldn't be blocking the parking because it's gonna get really busy. First thing tomorrow morning, but I'll tell you exactly what happened. Uh, when we get back in the truck. So we got Maria's house of pancakes with just good food. <laughs> and we got the truck parked right here. Okay, a little bit more context. I promise this is going to be it before we get into the rest of like the live action takes. Um, but I ended up driving, following him back on these back roads, and I told him explicitly to take country roads. But he didn't know where we were. He didn't feel like checking the, uh, the map on his phone to see what country roads to take. So his default was just to follow whatever Google Maps said. And Google Maps, of course, said take the highway home. And so we were driving through the country, everything was fine. It was a little bit sketchy, especially when he would accelerate around a curve. And I just simply could not see the road at all if there were trees up, because there was no uh, like starlight or moonlight getting in. It was dark, it was dangerous. Um, and I was kind of stupid, but oh well, I'm here now, it's okay. Um, and so we end up pulling out to this main road that turns onto the highway. And this is like a pretty notorious place for cops uh, just to sit and stay. So a couple cars go by and I'm like, man, I bet there's gonna be a cop. And then he goes, not thinking about me being right behind him, knowing that I have to stay right behind him on his tail, otherwise I'm not gonna be able to see. Um, and whoever's in front of me isn't gonna know what's going on. So he takes off and doesn't leave enough of a gap for me to follow. Like there was traffic and 
Of course, he could have made it himself and he safely did, but there wasn't enough room for two vehicles. So I was waiting there with no headlights on and guess who comes driving by? Police officer. So they come driving by and then they do a quick U-turn uh, in the parking lot that was right there and come heading in my direction. Like you could tell he saw that I was there. He knew that I was there with no headlight. And of course I didn't have the title for this thing yet. Like I had just bought it, but I didn't have a plate on it. I didn't have insurance cause it was closed. It's after 5 PM that I bought this thing. Um, and so it would have been a real mess. So he ends up spinning around, he comes back and I'm like, okay, it's now or never. I turn right, I dip into the parking lot, immediately shut the truck off, go in, and I'm like, yo, uh, the headlights gave out on this thing and I can't drive it home, can I leave it in your parking lot until tomorrow? Um, so that's what ended up happening. And that's what you'll see right now. We will cut back to live action with the truck and I promise you the rest of the video is gonna be good and less of me talking. So enjoy the truck from here on out. Didn't have to pee when I was inside, but I had to pee when I got out here. Cold pee pee. <laughs> Very shriveled. Yeah, we need uh, we need another one in the fleet. Yeah, are we going to get one? Yes, we are. So, uh, anyway, to talk about last night's journey, uh, we went, didn't have headlights, and so now we're going to pick it back up uh, with, I don't know which key's which, so I just got a whole bunch of second gen keys right here and we're gonna make it work. It does too. You! Yeah! Oops, you're on the speed limit, I see. <laughs> yeah. Oh, honey. It should be completely fine driving home at this point. I mean, obviously I don't have a plate yet because we didn't go to the DMV this morning, but um, it should be no issue because it's light enough out for no headlights. And I think he'll be following me this time. So. I have a good driver this time. Hey! I went in there and said, don't tow this. And they said to park at the corner, that way you weren't taking up prime spots this morning for the breakfast rush. <laughs> what? <laughs> Look at her, it's sick. Ew. Come on, it's sick. That's yeah. a long <laughs> We can do the meter than this girl, you! Oh. What did you say after seeing it for the first time? Holy <laughs> the fender! <laughs> he loves the fender. Now you can see the fender. Oh! The door! Oh. Dodge! Okay. I'll follow you. First one, baby. Yes. I'm gonna leave these in here with you. <laughs> While we're uh, fueling up, I'll let you see what it looks like. The seat's not too bad, actually. Um, I didn't realize how hideously filthy this thing is. Like. It was sitting for a little while, so it's mildewy. Um, there's a whole bunch of trash. This is what I would consider a disaster detail of sorts. So that will be fun to do. I don't know what we're doing with this section yet because this is nasty. But uh, this is nice and grungy. The bumper's cracked. I didn't quite realize that either. Um, got tons of dirt. Oh, yuck. That is horrendous. Look in here. Oh, it's like bed liner. It's like bed liner if it was mold and mildew. Anyway, we are uh, stocked up on 87 regular. You know, that's what we're using in here. 30 bucks should be enough to get us home. Roll and roll a little coal 
on the way. Key it on right now. Get that little weight to start. And instant. Champion. about 25 or 28 or 30 K. Let's get it, baby. Okay, because I beat him in the race, I think I'm gonna break boost him. Dooch and a clapped out dooch. That shot. Damn it. We got some more mold up here. If you know what? That's pretty you good. Love it. That's pretty good. Dude, those are some pretty decent welds, too. True. Some dimes. We got the Banks High Ram in there. A new battery? New bat, new bat bat, just one, just not one. <laughs> They said too much money. Intake. Turbo. Turbski. Oh, it's wrapped. Heat wrap manifold. Oh, I got Look at this mess of wiring. Yeah, I saw it. I was like, ugh. Yikes. Oh, there's your problem. <laughs> Where? <laughs> You'll see it. Oh, 
There it is. <laughs> so that's where the exhaust is coming out, it, not these Not boys. these boys. I wish it was coming out of those boys. Those are sick. Maybe we'll do it, but probably not. <laughs> no, probably not. <laughs> Being honest. We got the third gen, but that's junk. These are the nice ones. <laughs> right. No, those those both are junk down there. Yeah. Look at the truck lot, man. We got any color you want. So that's it for this video. Hopefully you like the truck. Hopefully you love how beat up it is. And hopefully you can see what this thing could become because I'm super excited to build it. I want to clean up the doors, clean up the fender, get the headlights in, uh, get some over fenders on, get some fat wheels on it because it has the built engine, the built trans. And so we need it to look like a show truck or at least kind of a ricer truck uh, anyway. And that's exactly what I'm going to build it into. I can't wait. Um, so if you like the video and want to support the channel, give it a like, drop a comment telling me below what you want to see on this build. What should I do to it? Subscribe to the channel if you want to follow along with this build, any other second gen content, with any Cummins content, with any sort of vehicle content, because this is an automotive channel. So give it a subscribe, hit the subscribe button down below, whatever, you know what I mean. And if you're interested in learning for yourself how to snag incredible deals, uh, how to negotiate like a pro, what to look out for with the purchase of your next vehicle, whether that's your daily driver or your next project, how to build profitably, because that's what I know how to do. And that's what I'm gonna show you how to do in this series. Then click the link down below to enroll in my program uh, automotive arbitrage that teaches you everything that I know on how to build strategically and profitably so that you're not pouring thousands into a build that you're going to ultimately lose money on, but instead how you can build profitably. That's the goal with the automotive money channel with me, how I structure all my builds. So if you want to learn my techniques and my strategies, it's down below. Anyway, with that in mind, I will see you on the next one. Peace.